Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERW Plans, and these are the 10 best pens for your passion planner. I have a lot of pens. I mean, a lot of pens. As in, a huge collection of pens. And I never know which pen to use, so I decided to take all these and put them to the test for the 10 best. First, let's talk about the metrics that we used to judge our pens. I went through on two pages of my passion planner and labeled all of our pens. I timed how long it took to dry as either five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or greater than a minute. Uh, we checked for the back of the pages for ghosting and bleeding. We checked not only on here, but also on our Electrum for ghosting or bleeding. We checked for smoothness versus skipping in the ink. We then went over every pen with a highlighter and a marker to see which ones would bleed after their completed dry time. We checked them all in a sticker from Chelsea Brown Designs to see which ones worked best on stickers and which just simply won't dry on stickers. We also tested thick faux calligraphy lettering. Sometimes it may look good when you're writing a single line over here, but when you start to go over the same spot, you're going to get the bleeding and ghosting that you get from other pens. We also checked it in for coloring. On coloring, it was scored on whether or not it could color solidly and whether or not we had ghosting and bleeding from it. We then went for ease of use. Is it too thin to handle? Is it too thick? Is it too long? I mean, this just sounds really wrong, but there is a ease of handling that it got checked for. We also went and did two stripes of white out tape and then wrote over them to see, does it pull? And in some cases, does it continue to ghost and bleed through white out? And then finally, we tested it for heat and for inkiness. For heat, we took the Electrum and left it in my car for 24 hours on a 90 degree day in Colorado. And for the inkiness, we basically did a scribble test to see as far as how smooth the ink was when it ran out. We then totaled the scores and what you see now is the top 10. What's the difference between ghosting and bleeding? This is a question that comes up a lot, so I figured I'd take care of it right now. With ghosting, which is a lot more common on a Lectrum or a Moleskin than it is in a Passion Planner, you can still see the letters through the back of the page even though the ink itself hasn't bled through. For example, if I was to put a white piece of paper behind the back of that page, If it ghosts, you can see the writing. As you can see, most of the pens ghost on Electrum, but you'll see some where it looks like I completely skipped a line. Those are the ones where there's no ghosting. Bleeding is where you can actually see the ink has saturated the paper and has started to come through the other side. If you were to color or write with one of the bleeding markers, eventually it would actually start to bleed on to the next page. Our overall winner is the Uniball Jetstream Ballpoint Pen. This pen did amazing with every metric that we put it through. It dried incredibly quickly in less than five seconds. The writing was smooth. Nothing could smear this pen. And the only place where it really fell down was in coloring in. It's not going to give you a solid color, but that's because it's a pen, not a marker. Overall, this is going to be my everyday pen going forward. For best gel pens, the Sarasa Dry Mark-On is your best bet. Sarasa has a few different dry pens, but the Dry Mark-On is the one that you're going to want for the best possible gel pen. This pen dried incredibly quickly with really smooth writing and almost no smear whatsoever on highlighter and no smear on marker.
For the best ballpoint pen, the Zebra Serrari is going to be your best bet. This pen was very similar to the Uniball, but where it really stood out was in sticker writing. Unlike the Uniball, which you do need to give a second or two to dry to prevent smudges, this pen did not smudge. It dried almost instantly and would be a great choice for left-handed writers as well. The Coptic Multiliner is the best multiliner of all those that were put through the test. It doesn't have the same color range as some of the other multiliners, but where this one really shines is in its quick dry time, its ability to write really well on sticker paper, and its incredibly fine point. If you have a small or compact passion planner, this pen should be your go-to. And unlike some other fine liners or multi-liners, it does not bleed through no matter how thick you write. Most of the pens we've been showing you have been pens from Jet Pens, but the Bic Atlantis Ballpoint was a great standout pen that you can get in any drugstore or grocery store. It was one of the few pens that showed no ghosting whatsoever in the Lectrum or Moleskin journal. It's a fairly smooth writing, though it does skip a bit, but it doesn't leave ink spots, and is overall a good standard cheap pen. If you saw the video for the best ultra fine pens for a compact or small passion planner, you know about the Pilot High Tech already. This is one of my favorite go-to pens. It's an incredibly fine point gel ink pen that writes really smoothly in a very limited space. I love the length on it, which gives it a great handleability, and it doesn't bleed through and doesn't pull on any kind of whiteout tape. If you're into calligraphy, Tombow's calligraphy pens are the best. This is the gray dual end calligraphy pen that you can get on jet pens. It is an amazing pen for calligraphy, which isn't too hard or too soft, allowing even a novice in calligraphy to write really cool thick and thin lines. It also has the dual ends with either black or gray, giving you a huge amount of variety when it comes to your writing. Unlike a lot of the other calligraphy pens or markers that we tested, this one does not bleed through. There is very little ghosting, even in the Lectrum and Moleskin. It's an excellent pen for first-time calligraphers and probably one of my favorite pens for decorating my passion planner. For archival ink, you absolutely can't go wrong with the Pigma Micron pen. This pen comes in a variety of widths, so you can use it with either your small, medium, or large passion planners. It also doesn't bleed through and no ghosting when you use it in a passion planner and only minor ghosting when used in the Lectrum or Moleskin. Because it's archival ink, it lasts forever and won't fade or bleed regardless of how hot you leave it in, it gets in the car when you leave it. Overall, it's one of my favorite pens. Finally, the Coptic drawing pen. I tried a few different fountain pens, and I found that the Coptic drawing pen is overall far and away my favorite. This pen isn't the best when it comes to doing calligraphy, but where it lacks in calligraphy skills, it totally makes up for in a very fine, precise line with a little bit of flexibility. For best marker, it's Tombow Dual Brush Markers, hands down. I tried a few different brands, including the Crayola brand, and overall, Tombow just was better. It had less bleed through and less ghosting. It gave me a better control for thick and thin lines with its dual ends and its very flexible brush end. And it's incredible for blending, so you can get really amazing gradients that you can't find with the Crayola crayon markers. Only downside is that you cannot highlight over these. Because they're meant to be blendable art markers, if you try to highlight over them with another Tombow or even with a highlighter, you're going to get some bleeding. 
So your best bet, highlight first and Tombow on top. Otherwise, these are a great marker that I totally recommend. Finally, honorable mention to the Sharpie pen. When we're talking about Sharpies, make sure that you're talking about the Sharpie pen, not the art pen, and not a Sharpie marker. Sharpie pens, which you can get individually in a craft store, or you can even pick up in a five or 10 pack at your drugstore, are, mu are much better equipped than any kind of marker for writing on paper of all types. Thank you so much for watching the video this week on the best pens for the Passion Planner. Coming up next time, we will have the 10 worst pens and markers for your Passion Planner. If you think you know what pen or marker should be on that list, leave a comment below and we'll see if you're right next week. And if there's a pen or marker that we didn't test that you think should be on the list, leave a comment, let us know. If you wanna see the full test, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash ERW plans and join our Facebook group. The Facebook group has the full one hour test video so you can see every moment of our pen test madness. Until next week, it's ERW plans. Please make sure you click the button in the upper left hand corner, subscribe. And until next time, thank you so much for joining us. It's instagram.com ERW underscore plans or erwplans.etsy.com. Thanks, guys, and I will see you next week.